So why should we keep on going back to the Book of Marjorie Kemp? What does that offer a 21st century readership? Well, basically, it's an encyclopedia of medieval life in 15th century England. And for that reason alone, it's absolutely invaluable if you want to know what people were wearing, where people travelled, how they travelled, um, what they read, um, what a marriage was like, what, um, what people accused each other of, what people stole. There's all kinds of you know, wealth of information in there. But really, it's um, a very captivating and very full text. Every time, you know, I've been working on it for several years now, and every time I go back to it, I find something new. And um, you really get a very complex and well-developed portrait of Kemp as a protagonist and the people around her. Besides that, there's things like medieval travel. Um, the Book of Marjorie Kemp gives us a lot of information about the mobility of a mid-15th century Englishwoman. People might think that medieval people didn't tend to travel very much, far, they didn't travel far from their village or from their town. That's absolutely not true of someone like Marjorie Kemp. She travels all the way from Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Um, she goes to Norway, she travels throughout England, from York to Bristol to Canterbury. Um, she goes to Venice, Rome, Assisi, Bologna, throughout Italy. And she also travels to Palestine, to Jerusalem and to Jaffa and to Bethlehem. And what we're seeing really here is someone who's traveling extraordinary distances. And the book ends with her walking and riding by cart from Danzig, Gdansk in Poland, to Aachen in Germany, and then to Calais. This is a phenomenally long journey. Um, and by this point, she was a really quite elderly woman. Um, and what we're seeing really is the medieval world as it looked to a 15th century English person. Um, it's got these nodes, Canterbury, Jerusalem, Rome, Santiago, which are the holy cities. And then you also get these portraits of pilgrims' hostels or um, kind of wayside um, barns where Kemp sleeps one night and this kind of thing. Um, and we get a sense of people moving, people on the move between uh, very important sites to them. And this, I think, is really quite remarkable that people could be um, motivated and stirred to undertake very dangerous, very expensive journeys. Um, quite, and, and Kemp talks about the discomfort and the um, bullying and the um, kind of danger of her journeys. And the book really tells us a lot about what it was to make that kind of um, sacred travel. Um, the book is also very much worth reading um, in terms of telling us about women's experience, and that's something which shouldn't be overlooked. Um, really, Kemp is one of the earliest women writers in English, and she goes to visit another very early English writer, Julian of Norwich, and um, there's really very few comparable figures from before the 17th century. And um, it tells us a lot about um, middle class people, um, where the portraits of the Middle Ages we tend to get often focus either on the very lowest or the very highest. Um, and the Book of Marjorie Kemp tells us about the, what, what, I mean, middle class is a slightly anachronistic term, but the bourgeois people of medieval England, and that's a very valuable perspective, I think.